Communist Manifesto is meant to be the message to all working people to stand up to their oppressors and gain freedom from their bourgeoisie overlords. In reality, it's nothing more than a deception tactic used to rile up the masses to divide people based on that artificial division of class that Marx defined in his manifesto. <clears throat> this division that he created led to discontent and chaos, which allowed an authoritarian government to take over and forcibly establish socialism. Socialism is impossible to achieve voluntarily, at least in a large society. Marx had many flaws in his thinking, and he also let personal biases get into his manifesto. Marx, in his manifesto, does not see people as individuals with distinct thoughts, behaviors, backgrounds, goals, desires, and many, many other differences. Instead, he just sees people as homogenous entities separated almost exclusively by class, what he calls the bourgeoisie and the proletariat that are pitted against one another. A quote from Marx explains his philosophy regarding people. Society as a whole is more and more splitting up into, great, into two great hostile camps into two gray classes directly facing each other, bourgeoisie and proletariat, taken from the manifest of the Communist Party. Yet, Marx does not consider the individuals within these so-called gray classes, even if we consider his class divisions, which on their own are not accurate due to social and economic mobility. He still fails to recognize the individual's thoughts and whether people even want this class struggle in the first place. Many people in the time of the Industrial Revolution, did not feel oppressed or were oppressed in any way, and actually preferred working in the factory compared to other alternatives as this was beneficial for themselves and the society. The Industrial Revolution was characterized by immense progress re regarding technology, the economy, and the improvement in life, in the quality of life of an average individual. Things were rapidly changing, and old norms and ideas are being questioned and replaced with newer and, and more sophisticated ideas. Marx <laughs> believed that everyone, down to the last individual, would be willing to give up the improvements in their lives for something as abstract as a class war. Overall, I believe that one of Marx's fundamental flaws was not seeing people as individuals, rather than seeing people as collective, as collective groups. groups. Another flaw of Marx, of Marx's philosophy rather, was his belief that people would voluntarily give up their property for the greater good of society. And before I will continue, this is, this is exactly what's happening now. The greater good, give up your freedom for the greater good. Anyways, let's continue. People like to naturally own things, have, are, and will continue to compete for the privilege of owning certain things. Specifically, most of the conflicts in human history were caused by land disputes. Marxist system, Marxism, calls for the total abolition of private property in favor of a collective solution where no one owns anything and property can be used by anyone, also known as co common property. The main issue of this is stated in the beginning of this entire passage, of this entire passage, is the human nature, the natural human behavior. A quote from the manifesto that described Marx's views on pro on property is a quote from Marx. In this sense, the theory of the communist may be summed up in a single sentence. Abolition of private property. Another quote also explains it. When therefore capital is converted into common property, into the property of all members of society, personal property is not there, thereby transformed into social property. What Marx is saying is not only ludicrous and impossible due to human nature, it's also very inefficient when it comes to economics. This system will not allow the hardworking people to receive more for their work, and instead everyone will receive the same things, regardless of how much they work. In capitalism, the main driving force behind working more is receiving more in the monetary exchange unit, also known as what normal people call money. Use your greater supply of money to buy things from other people. This will benefit everyone in the society, not only through the greater wealth this generates and capital, but also because more jobs are created for people to work in and produce, and to also sell goods and services to other well produce, yeah. In socialism, there is no such goal or desire for people to have, since everyone gets the same thing, no matter how much or how little they work, there is literally no incentive to work. 
This causes laziness and greed to take over in such a society, and if nothing is done, the society will completely collapse. This is why an authoritarian state is usually needed to enforce this working process. However, in order to enforce it, you need people to actually want to enforce it. The state has thousands of bureaucrats willing to do this, to enforce the socialist policies, which only further reduces the wealth in the society, which goes towards the actual working man. Overall, this is another flaw in Marxist philosophy. The final flaw that I will be discussing, because otherwise this will be too damn long, is the family unit. Marxist philosophy with regards towards the family unit were simple. And by the way, before moving on, this is extremely progressive, and this is quote-unquote progressive, and this is what's going on in today's society too. The Marxist philosophy with regards towards the family unit was very simple. It shouldn't exist. Instead of what we call a family unit with a mother, father, children, Marx believed that the community should raise and educate the child. The reason for this, once again, is due to his belief that a family unit, which is the relationship between parents and a child slash children, teaches children the capitalistic and bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie mentality. Another quotation from him explains his mentality regarding the family unit. The bourgeoisie claptrap about the family and education, about the hollowed correlation of parents and child, becomes all the more disgusting. The more by action of modern industry, the family ties among the proletarians are torn asunder, and their children transformed into simple articles of commerce and instruments of labor. End of quote. I don't know why I said, didn't say that before. <laughs> Whatever, let's continue. Marx's major flaw, like all of his ideas thus far, is down to not understanding basic human behavior. People, more specifically parents, want to, at least most of the time, if they're working correctly and not completely insane, own and have children to themselves, and they want to raise their children. They want to feel responsible for their children and teach them and pass on their beliefs, traditions, and values. The reason for this is down to biology. We have evolved like all of the species to adapt, spread our genes, in order to sustain our species. If we assume that everyone, even if every single person, agrees to Marxist plans for the family unit, there would still be other major issues. The abolition of the family unit would lead to a, let's just say not a very good situation, where children would feel like they don't belong, and they would not be able to succeed. In addition, many people probably would not want to have kids, seeing as there's no point, since you can't raise your kid. Like, what's, what's the point? And that will bring many other psychological side effects, which would be devastating for the society as a whole. Marx also is very Marx also is very obsessed and biased with the people he calls bourgeoisie. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that. I don't know how to pronounce it. Bourgeoisie? I don't know. Sorry. He constantly repeats and uses the term bourgeoisie to refer to everything that he thinks is wrong with society. A quote from the Communist Manifesto describes it. The bourgeoisie has torn away from the family in sentimental veil and has reduced the family relation to a mere money relation. And here it becomes evident that the bourgeoisie is unwilling, is unfit any longer to be the ruling class in society and to impose its conditions of, the, of existence upon society as an overriding law. It is unfit because it is in incompetent to ensure an existence to its slave within this within his slavery because it cannot help letting him sink into such a state that it has to feed him instead of being fed by him Saudi can no longer live under the bourgeoisie in other words its existence is no longer compatible with society marx in his manifesto has blamed almost every single issue of humanity not on the mistakes of people as a whole but rather on one single group that Marx considers by far the most evil thing in society, or concept, the bourgeoisie. As I explained already, the, so the so-called bourgeoisie is not a homogenous entity, but rather a collection of various individuals with different ways of interpreting what Marx wrote. The reason for Marx's blaming of the bourgeoisie is due to his personal life. But personal biases should never be in politics, or be included in the description of an ideology or the analysis of an event looking back at this 
The Communist Manifesto has many very clear and fatal flaws, and Marxism, and socialism, and communism, and collectivism, and every single leftist ideology has many very has many very clear and fatal flaws that are very apparent when looking at basic human behavior. It completely ignores the concept of individuality, natural human behavior, the benefits of capitalism, traditions, and several other things. As I mentioned already, the Industrial Revolution was an era, was an era of great development of progress. This was primarily caused by laissez-faire capitalism. Of course, there was still a lot of government corruption and cronyism during this time. But that doesn't change the fact that Marx completely ignored the benefits of capitalism. Marx also failed to give an example of what a system would actually look like in practice. Summing up everything that I have said, the Communist Manifesto is nothing more than mere propaganda. It has the slogans and style of writing to rile up the masses, but has little substance to actually back these socialist claims.